this is gonna be a little bit different from my usual at the bench episodes. Normally I show you guys my process and how I'm creating whatever I'm working on. But today I'm gonna to be focusing mainly on doing a lot of talking. Hopefully you still find it interesting. I'm going to address something that I've been getting asked a lot lately, and that is how do I grow my social media? I quit my job in August of 2023. So I finished out the month of August, for those of you that don't know. I was a loan closer and you work in months. You have your pipeline for a month, you work on whatever loans are within that month's timeline. As you're getting close to the end of that month, you get loans for the next month and you're basically like finishing out a quota for the month that you're working on before starting the next month. So I finished the month of August and at the time I had less than 300 followers on Instagram. I quit my job with less than 300 followers on Instagram. I don't know what I was thinking, but I knew I knew this was a risk that I needed to take. Currently, as of like today, today is June 4th, so it's been about nine months, and I have like 7,600 or 7,700 followers on Instagram. I'm not a huge account. I don't have like hundreds of thousands of followers or even tens of thousands of followers yet. I have had significant consistent growth. I'm gonna go over the big key points that I think are most important when trying to grow your social media accounts. Take everything that I say with a grain of salt because for example, when I started to grow or when I started my business account on Instagram, for example, the algorithm was different to how it is now. At the time, it was the, you have to be po posting every single day, multiple times per day. This was also when that trend of having a two second reel, but a novel in your description was really big so that people spend like 30 minutes reading your description and all that time your two second reel is playing through and it ends up being like 40 views on your reel. I hated that and I'm sad to admit that I tried to do that once or twice. At the end of the day, that is not, that is not content that is going to reminisce with other people. People don't care about that kind of content. It's not something that is going to grow your account. So the first major talking point that I want to go over is having content that has value. I'm assuming most of the people that are watching this are a maker of some kind. I'm assuming maybe a jewelry maker. But whatever you're doing, I highly recommend just record everything that you're doing. See what kind of content you can make with that. It can be a day in the life. It can be a process video. It can be a before and after. It can be like snapshots of sections of what you're doing. There's so many options out there. Now, what's most important here is you need to be posting a variety of different types of videos because when you're starting off, you need to give the algorithm a variety to choose from so it pushes things out and then you see what comes back as the catchiest. I used to post like I used to post what I thought was important being like the, the final reveal. I'm like, this is the jewelry that you can buy. Like, look how pretty it is. Don't you want it? And nobody goes on to social media to be sold to. The best way to get a customer is to get a follower. And when that follower sees what you do, how you do it, gets emotionally tied to your business, they most likely become a customer. My advice to you in regards to what you're posting is to post something that you enjoy doing. For example, I really enjoy doing the process videos that I post. I will say it makes 
making jewelry exponentially longer. I once made a ring over the course of three days and I was recording the process and then I decided the next day that I was going to scrap that ring and re remake it and I wasn't going to film any of the process and within a few hours I remake the entire thing from start to finish from melting down silver rolling it out and making the entire ring it was a few hours time without recording the process make content that you enjoy making that you think other people that are not in the same industry as you would enjoy watching my second most important piece for growing your social media account is to be consistent this is with everything this is with TikTok, instagram youtube whatever you're posting on you need to be consistent posting i have found for instagram and TikTok, and i will just put like a little asterisk here i did not have TikTok for a very long time i only recently started posting on it and like had it on my phone and all that stuff so i'm still very young on TikTok. But within the past month of me consistently posting, I have seen a lot more growth. So, consistency. For Instagram and TikTok, at least three reels per week. I think three is the sweet spot. And have a schedule. Pick three days out of the week. Post on those three days every week. What's really great about I believe both platforms, but I'm mainly going to talk about Instagram, is the professional dashboard. And if you go into the professional dashboard, there is a section where you can look at the days of the week and see the times that your followers are most active. So I have my specific days based on when my followers are most active. And I post my three reels per week at the times that my followers are most active. Stories, five times a week at least. There is a, like a rumor, or I don't know if it's real or not, that if you're posting stories every single day, you get less views on your stories than if you take a day off completely and let your stories reset. I have done this a couple times where I posted every single day and I did find I had less views on my stories. So I usually give myself a buffer over the weekend so that my um, stories timeline resets and then on Monday I get a bunch of views. It's incredibly important to be posting stories because you have two types of people on social media. The people that watch stories religiously and the people that don't watch stories at all. So if you're not posting stories, you're good for the people that don't watch stories at all, but you're missing out on an, an entire audience of people that do watch stories. At least by posting stories, and you don't have to post a ton. You know, you can post a couple stories, a do half a dozen, a dozen. You can post 50 stories. I know a lot of accounts that just post, 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 post stories. and. As someone that likes stories, I do, I actually enjoy stories. I enjoy watching them. If you're posting stories, you're, you're feeding that curiosity of the people that enjoy watching stories. The people that don't enjoy watching stories aren't going to watch them anyways, but you still get them with your reels and your posts. So it is super important to post stories. YouTube is an entirely different beast. You also need to have a schedule for your YouTube posts. YouTube is a little bit trickier because it is generally a longer video that you have to record, edit, post. So if you can't stick to, I'm posting on this day at this time every week, that's okay. Try and post one time a week. Maybe one week it's Tuesday, one week it's Thursday, one week, it's okay. Give yourself a little bit of grace. If you fall behind on your schedule, don't worry about it. Pick yourself back up and get back into the swing of things. Maybe you need to skip a week. Maybe you only post a video every two weeks. That's okay. Just be consistent about it. There are times where we need to take breaks. That's okay. Take your break. 
Get yourself mentally prepared when you come back from your break and get back onto that schedule. And sometimes breaks are a good thing. I actually did that with TikTok. I took a break for maybe like, maybe a month. Um, it was maybe like a month ago where I did this. I was like, I am uninstalling TikTok from my phone. I have no views, no interactions, nothing. I took a break and then I was like, you know what? It's lazy of me. Growing my business includes growing it on all social media platforms. So I reinstalled it. I started posting. I posted consistently. Every time I posted a reel on Instagram, I posted it on TikTok and YouTube as well. And I've been getting, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more views, but I'm getting double, triple, four times the amount of interactions. I actually had someone comment, on my TikTok video, TikTok is finally showing me the videos that I want to see. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm finally reaching the people that want to see my videos. It's okay to take a break. It's fine. Take your break. Mentally prepare yourself. Come back and start up again. And I think the most important piece to all of this content creation is not to burn yourself out. Because, and you might think I'm crazy for saying this, content creation is a full-time job. And I've actually had people that have reached out with this question of how did I grow my social media saying to me, but I don't want to create content. And the reality is, if you don't, then there's no guarantee that you'll grow on social media. For example, one person that reached out to me they would post a picture of their finished jewelry. They had been, I think, a jeweler for nine years. I don't know how long they'd been on Instagram. And they were like, hey, you know, your growth is amazing and inspiring. I've been doing this for this many years and I don't know how to grow my account. And I said, you know, along the lines of what I'm telling you guys is you need to have engaging content to just post a finished picture of your product. And I will tell you, the jewelry this person was creating was beautiful, like gorgeous, but it wasn't getting any exposure because you have to work with the platform that you're using. And at the moment, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they're all more video centric. If you don't want to make content, that's okay, but you might not be able to grow as much as if you are creating content. Let's talk a little bit about hashtags, tags, descriptions, all of what you type in a hashtag, a description, a tag, hopefully helps the platform to push your content out to the people that are interested in that type of content. So make your YouTube video, post it, go back in, type in your tags. There's a big debate in regards to hashtags. Some people say don't use them at all. Some people say only a few, three to five or three to six. Some people say spam as many hashtags as you possibly can. I do three hashtags and it's the same three every single time. Actually no, it's the same two and then depending on what I'm making I might change that third one to something else. Play around, see what works for you. Descriptions are really important. They, everyone always says you have to have a good hook and the hook is your first sentence because somebody reading your hook is going to want to continue. If it's, if it's engaging, they're going to want to continue reading the rest of what you have written. But I will say, there are times where I'm like, I don't have a whole lot to say in regards to this video. And I just want to keep this short and sweet. And I'll just say like, if it's Friday, have a great weekend, something like that. And I still get the same engagement. But when I do post longer descriptions and I put something that I'm emotionally invested into in that description, I do get a lot more comments in regards to what I wrote about. For example, one time I wrote about how I saw a jeweler that said 
that you have to niche down and only create one type of piece of jewelry for the rest of your jewelry career and how I disagreed with that. And it sparked this awesome debate in my comment section of that reel. And other jewelers chimed in and they gave their opinions and it was, it was awesome. It was awesome engagement. Um, it was awesome to be able to talk to other jewelers about how they felt about this particular topic. So you decide what you want to do in terms of descriptions, but play around with longer descriptions, play around with shorter descriptions, figure out the types of hashtags that you want to use, look at other people's accounts that you enjoy watching or that you follow that are in the same niche or in other niches, see what they're doing. Maybe they don't do any hashtags, try that out. Maybe they do a few, try that out but find what works for you. I also often get asked what I shoot my videos with. I used to have a photography business. I have some really expensive, really beautiful mirrorless DSLRs, really awesome lenses, and I don't use any of them to shoot my content. I use my iPhone. Uh, it's an iPhone 13. I use the front camera, the back camera, like, I have phone stands everywhere, I have ring lights, and I use it because it's it's convenient and I'm non-stop, you know, moving from working at my bench where I'm, I, I go to where I'm soldering, I change the camera angle from here, I put the camera angle here, and if I have a, a big old mirror, I mean, even though mirrorless are smaller, if I have a big camera right here in front of me, it's just a little bit more tricky. So I use my iPhone for now, maybe in the future I'll change to using my cameras, but this works for me. I get decent quality video, it serves its purpose for me, and it makes creating content just a little bit easier. So you don't have to go out and spend tons of money on something just to start creating content. And this is my last talking point about this. I know it's really awkward and maybe it's cringy or whatever word you want to use to sit and talk to your phone. Because literally right now I'm looking at myself and I'm talking, but in my head, I'm talking to you guys. Like it, it's, you have to get past that mental block of I'm in a room by myself and I'm talking like I'm talking to a room full of people. And that's what you have to do. I don't know if you remember in school when Maybe you had to give a speech or something and your teacher would always say like, stand in front of the mirror and practice your speech that way. Pretend like you're giving the speech to your class while you're talking in front of the mirror. It's the same thing. Just start doing it. It's gonna be awkward. I remember it was super awkward when I started, but the more you do it, the less awkward it gets and the better you get at it. People want to see what you're making. They want to see what you're doing. They, they, they enjoy watching others work. So don't be, feel so self-conscious about it. Just start trying to do it. And eventually it'll be second nature and you won't even think you're looking at a camera. You'll think you're actually talking to the audience that you're hoping to talk to. Go for it. I know it's intimidating. I know it takes a lot of time. I know there are some hurtful people on the internet that want to bring down anyone they possibly can. Try and block all of that out. You can hide and delete comments. Go ahead and do it for your own sanity and just try. And of course, if you don't want to, that's totally up to you. But if you are looking to grow your social media accounts, these are my tried and true uh, processes that I do with all of my, my um, platforms so that I do grow. I think this is some of the best points that you can integrate into what you're already doing or maybe what you haven't started doing, doing yet so that you can grow too. So I hope this was helpful and if it was, I'd love for you to like this video and if you would like to subscribe to my channel and follow along with me as I hope to become a better self-taught metalsmith, I would love that. I'd love to share my journey with you guys and hope that instead of just talking to my phone, I'm actually talking <laughs> to an audience that wants to hear this sort of information. So have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time.